This message is going to be entitled, The Killing of the Firstborn. The Killing of the Firstborn is a remarkable event of history. It actually happened during the time of the first exodus. The children of Israel were instructed not to eat bread with leaven and that is connected to the teaching that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. And the apostate Paul is responsible for that religion. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start all the way from the story in 2 Samuel chapter 11 because a lot of people fail to realize that when David took a man's wife and killed her husband that was a picture of what Paul did to the church hold on to your seat don't just leave just yet 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 1 and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now there's a whole lot in that scripture right there. Now David in this verse in scripture is twofold. And a lot of the scriptures are twofold, threefold, and even fourfold. And I teach type and shadows, and these types and shadows are like Bible characters, like actors, playing different roles. One Bible character can play up to one to three or more roles. God's word is multifaceted. It is the manifold wisdom of God. Jesus was taken up to be with the king in heaven. And he watched a man named Paul steal his father's church with his name on it. So when you look at verse 2, you see David arising from off his bed. And according to the gospel of Barnabas, we know that Jesus went into heaven alive from his bedroom. Four angels took him according to that gospel account. And he's walking on the roof of the king's house because now Jesus is with the real king, God the Father. And Jesus is watching a woman wash herself. Now, that woman washing herself is the nation of Islam, okay? And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And this is a beautiful religion, mashallah. This religion exceeds all religions. And we're going to come back to Bathsheba. And I'm going to connect Bathsheba with the nation of Islam. Going on. When we look at verse 3. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her and she came in unto him and he lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house. David sent messengers and took her. That's going into how Paul sent letters and took the church. First of all, we got to deal with David being a type and shadow of Paul. Now, this is how we can connect this. 
David is from the tribe of Judah. Benjamin is from the tribe of Benjamin. But the northern kingdom is called Ephraim and the southern kingdom is called Judah because during the time of the split, Benjamin and Levi joined with Judah. So the tribe of Judah consisted of three tribes. It consisted of Levi, Benjamin, and Judah. Verse 5. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. You see, everyone thinks the church belongs to Jesus, but it doesn't belong to Jesus. It belongs to Paul. Just like everyone thought Bathsheba belonged to Uriah, but she did not belong to Uriah. She belonged to David. The church just has Jesus name on it, but it belongs to Paul. Bathsheba just had Uriah's name on her, but she belonged to David. Now we're going to talk about three men, Uriah, Joseph, and Jesus. These three men have a lot in common. 2 Samuel 11 and 6. And David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slipped at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? Now think, who else was in a similar situation like this? Here we have David trying to make this man go and sleep with his wife so he can think the baby is his. Who else was in this situation? Joseph. Joseph was all alone in the house with Potiphar's wife. She wanted to lie with him, but he refused and because he did not lie with her, he got into trouble. The church does not have Jesus. They have Paul. Just like Potiphar's wife did not have Joseph, she had his garment. Who is the garment? Paul. Who put Jesus in this predicament? Paul. Who put Joseph in Potiphar's house? Potiphar. And we know that Potiphar is a type and shadow of Paul. Get it? Potiphar, the fur, okay? And Saul or Paul being the wolf in sheep clothing. You get it? This all points to Paul from the tribe of Benjamin or Judah. That's why Jesus called him the wolf in sheep clothing. Okay, so I just connected Joseph, Jesus, and Uriah. They were all innocent men that were lied on, okay, and were killed falsely. Uriah was killed falsely, Joseph was killed falsely, and Jesus was killed falsely, all right? Now I want to take you to 2 Samuel 11 and 11. And Uriah said unto David, the ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as thou livest? And as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. Now you're going to understand that Uriah man, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. This was an innocent man, and he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And you're going to understand how I'm going to connect this with Jesus. All right. 
2 Samuel 11 and 12. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also and tomorrow, and I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him. And he made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. So here we have David being deceptive and he got Uriah drunk. Let's see if we can get a type uh, and shadow of, let's see if we can find a scripture of Paul giving alcohol to one of his servants. This is going to be 1 Timothy 5.23. Paul says, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmity. So here we have David giving Uriah alcohol, and then we have Paul giving Timothy alcohol. Okay, now I want to keep going. 2 Samuel eleven fourteen, 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. So this is what I mean when I said that Uriah was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Uriah was killed through letters. He was killed through a letter. Just like Jesus, he wasn't killed physically, but he was killed, but he was killed from the letters of Paul. Paul murdered Jesus on biblical record, just like David is murdering Uriah through letters. Wow. Now we need to break this down, okay? Because I am thoroughly convinced and what I'm saying is true. And I'm going to show you more proof. Watch this. Let's go over what was said. How did he kill Uriah? He set Uriah in the forefront of the battle. What is that going into? Tell me. What do you think that is going into? He set him in the forefront of the battle. How did Paul set Jesus in the forefront of the battle? This is going to be Colossians 1.15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Paul is saying that Jesus is before everybody. Verse 17, and he is before all things, speaking of Jesus. So here we have letters of Paul setting Jesus in the forefront of the battle, just like David set Uriah in the forefront of the battle. Now we need to keep going. We need to keep going. He set him in the forefront of the hottest battle. What is that going into? He really pissed God off when he said that Jesus is the co creator that Jesus was before everything could you imagine how hot God almighty was okay that's what that's going into let's read that again 2 Samuel eleven fifteen, 15 and he wrote in the letter saying set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die and what does it mean, retire ye from him, set him in the forefront of the hottest battle, and support him, and then leave or forsake him, or in other words, pull back. That's what it means when he said retire him. What does that mean? Here we have them putting Uriah in the forefront of the battle, and then leaving him. Okay, how did Paul set Jesus in the forefront of the hottest battle and then he pulled back? He did this by being a hypocrite. And I'm going to show you what Paul wrote. In Romans 1.23, 
It reads, And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. So Paul has the strongest verse in the Bible against idolatry. And guess what he does? He commits idolatry by saying that Jesus is before all things and that Jesus is the co-creator. Paul did this. He the one that made everybody believe that Jesus is the co-creator and that he is God in the flesh. And then he goes and writes stuff like this in Romans chapter 1, 23 through 25. Okay, this is what we call being a hypocrite. And this is why Jesus used the word hypocrite more than anyone. And in the New Testament, Jesus is the only one who uses the word hypocrite. And he said it 20 times. Speaking of the Pharisees, and Paul was a Pharisee. He was the son of a Pharisee. Every time Jesus was talking about a hypocrite, he was talking about Paul. Now it's time for us to keep going. We in 2 Samuel eleven sixteen, And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Paul stole the church by killing Jesus on biblical record, just like David stole Bathsheba by killing Uriah. So let's do a recap. David stole a man's wife by killing her husband, through a letter. Paul stole the church by killing Jesus through letters. Now I pondered on the name Bathsheba. And Bathsheba represents the nation of Islam. Because only Muslims, us Muslims, purify ourselves with ritual washings. This is the woman Uriah was married to. Okay, he was married to Bathsheba. Now think about it. Uriah was with Bathsheba before David. So that means that before Paul came along, Jesus was with Bathsheba first. And Bathsheba represents Islam. This proves that Jesus was a Muslim. Islam is a beautiful religion to Jesus. Now these types and shadows is key because Uriah was with Bathsheba first. And who is Uriah? Uriah is a type and shadow of Jesus who was killed on biblical record courtesy of Paul. He was the one who was interested in the woman or the nation that is into ritual washings. Could you imagine how Jesus feels when he looks over the banister of heaven and he sees people who were formerly in the nation of Islam going to Paul's religion? Oh, that's got to hurt. That's got to hurt like it hurt Mehmet the Conqueror when he sent messengers to Vlad Dracula to collect the tax. And what did they do? They killed them with tent pegs in their skulls and impaled them. Man, it's got to be the most painful thing for the father to see a person go from Islam, the truth, into Christianity, which belongs to Paul. Now, that right there, that's got to be very painful. For heaven to watch. Going on. 2 Samuel eleven twenty six, And when the wife of Uriah. 
heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house. And she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Now, let's focus on verse 26. Because this is a picture of Jesus dying after he handles his father's business. After he destroys the cross first thing and kills the pigs and gets rid of the Jazi attacks, then he will die. God is going to cause him to die. And this is going to be a mourning. This is going to be a mourning. And I have scripture to prove what I'm saying. Let's go to Jeremiah 6, 26. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth, and wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation, for the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. Isn't it going to be horrible that Jesus has to come back and die and be buried? Peace and blessings be Upon him. I got more scripture for you. Amos 8:10. And I will turn your feast into mourning, and all of your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the mourning of an only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Oh, the day of the Lord is going to be bitter is going to be bitter when we have to see Jesus come and die like a man. That's just so messed up. Now you can understand that the life of Jesus was like a sheep led to the slaughter. Going on. I want to go to 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Now Paul is the rich man, and Jesus is, of course, the poor man. That's why he always stood up for the poor, okay? And they were told to remember the poor, Galatians 2.10. Only they would that we should remember the poor. Jesus said, the poor you have with you always, but you do not have me with you always. Jesus knew. He knew there was coming a day that he was going to have to die. Second Samuel 12 and 2, the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. That's Paul. All these churches you see with Jesus' name on it, They're not Jesus' churches. Jesus or Uriah was only interested in one nation, one religion. He was interested in the religion of Islam. He was interested in Bathsheba. (laughs) This stuff is amazing. This stuff is amazing. Paul is the founder of the Christian church. Look at all these churches. He is the rich man. And you're going to see that the judgment Nathan gave to Saul or Paul is the same judgment that Samuel gave to the Old Testament King Saul. Okay. And that story is seen in 2 Samuel. That's, that story is seen in 1 Samuel 15, 16 through 19. Getting back to where I was at, because this right here is getting very, very interesting. Paul has all these churches. Remember, Paul is the first king of Israel. He is a king Saul. But Jesus only had one church that was not even his, but his father's. And that church 
is Islam. Now watch this. 2 Samuel 12 and 3. But the poor man had nothing, speaking of Jesus, save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought up and nourished up, and grew it up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. See, this wife that Uriah had represented the nation of Islam. And as you can see, he did not lay with this woman like you would lay with a woman. This woman laid in his bosom. This is a picture of the Shunammite that laid in the bosom of David. I'm going to get that for you. This is going to be 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 1. Now King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Wherefore his servant said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king a young virgin. And let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel, and found a Bishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair. This is the nation of Islam. Watch this. And cherished the king and ministered to him. But the king knew her not. He didn't know her intimately. Okay, now this woman, a Shunammite, get this. Shunam actually comes from a place in Palestine. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, this woman represented the nation of Islam. And like I keep telling you. This doesn't belong to Jesus. This doesn't belong to Muhammad. This is the religion that belongs to God Almighty. As the Quran says, Muhammad is not your supervisor. Muhammad is not a father to any of you. Okay? This is the religion of Islam. And boy, it is potent. It is powerful. Don't you see that we all have to wash daily. We have to wash just like when God Almighty came down to be amongst the children of Israel and he told Moses to sanctify the children of Israel and be ready against the third day when he would come down in their sight. What did they have to do? They had to wash their clothes. They had to wash up. And look what we do. We wash up because we have no middleman. We pray directly to the Father in Islam. Now, God is merciful. He is merciful. He will forgive you for all that nasty stuff you said about Islam. You just have to repent. You need to repent. So, yes, Shunem is a place in Palestine. And this woman was of an Arabian Descent. I believe. I believe it wholeheartedly. I believe this woman was an Arab. Okay. I believe that this woman actually was a picture of the nation of Islam hands down. You can't disagree with that. Here she is, a Shunammite from Palestine. Mm. Going on. This is proof that the church of Islam does not belong to Jesus. He is just the Messiah of it. This is why David did not lay with the woman of Shunem, which translates to Palestine. And when, um, and when David's son, I don't know of how well versed y'all are, but for those who are well versed, David had a son named Adonijah. And he tried to take over his father's kingdom. He tried to take over his brother Solomon's kingdom. Okay. And that is a picture of Paul. He tried to take over something that did not belong to him. And 
Adonijah failed. He tried to take his father's kingdom. He failed. He tried to take it from his brother and failed. And his brother Solomon allowed him to stay alive. But he made a huge mistake. This man went to Bathsheba and tried to talk her into giving him a Bishak, the Shunammite, the Palestinian princess. And that was a huge mistake. Solomon, which is a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, killed him. He asked for that Shunammite. And that was the last thing he could ever ask for because he was killed on the spot, on the spot. Going on, going on. Second Samuel 12, 4. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own horde and of his own herd. To dress for the wafering, that means a traveling, okay, wafering means traveling, that's why it says traveler, okay, the wafering man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for that man that was come to him. Now, right here is very, very, very deep. This is so deep you could cry. Now, check this out. Now, this traveler is Israel. Now, if I go to Judges chapter 5, verse 6, it says, In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael. Now, Jael was a tent peg killer, just like Paul. Jael and Paul have so much in common. Now, check this out. Shamgar actually means judge in Israel. So when we go back to this passage, we see that this man named Paul or this religion we call Christianity has killed Jesus lamb. Who is Jesus lamb? The nation of Islam, the Palestinians. You got to think about it. America is a Christian nation and America has been Helping Israel kill the Palestinians. Wow. So the traveler is Israel and Paul's Christian nation, the devil's advocate, has been killing Jesus' lamb. And that lamb is Islam. See, lamb, Islam, has been killing this precious lamb. For Israel. Like I keep telling y'all. America is the devil's advocate. It is. So that was right there very deep. This Christian nation. Has been helping the traveler. Kill. The nation of Islam. Wow. Verse 5. And David's anger was greatly kindled. Against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb for folk because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, you are the man. You are the man, Paul, that has been doing this. You are the man. That stole God's church and you blamed it on Jesus when he had nothing to do with what you have done with the Lord's flock. You are the wolf in sheep clothing. Second Samuel chapter five through seven. This rebuke is going to Paul. It is going to him. He is the man that killed Uriah. He killed the Messiah on Biblical record. And Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. I anointed thee king over Israel. And I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. 
And I gave you your master's house. God allowed. God allowed. The apostle Paul. To have all these churches. He allowed him to do this. Because God is the ultimate power. It didn't mean that he instructed him to do it. It's just that he permitted it. Going back. I gave you your master's house. Who is his master's house? Jesus. Because Paul says Jesus is his master. So he allowed Paul to have all of his master's churches into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed the Messiah on biblical record. Thou hast killed Uriah. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and has taken his wife to be your wife. You took this man's church and has slain him with the sword of Ammon. So that's going into allowing all the other nations, okay, to partake in destroying the nation of Islam because Christianity is the strongest religion on the planet. It is the most powerful religion on the planet. Let me tell you something. Christianity is like the advice of Ahithophel. And Ahithophel's, his advice was like the oracle of God. Notice I said it was like the oracle of God. And Paul's letters are like the oracle of God. But it's not. It is not. So God allowed Paul to do all of this. Going back to 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 10. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. That means there's not going to be any peace in Christianity. There's always going to be war. In the midst of Christianity. And I'm going to keep going. Thus saith the Lord. Behold I will raise up evil against thee. Out of thine own house. And I will take your wives. Before thine eyes. And give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives. In the sight of the sun. So what is that going into? That's going into all of the converts of Christianity. All the churches in Christianity are going to start being converted into Islam. And Jesus is going to be able to see all these Christians come to Islam. And right now, Islam is the fastest growing religion on the planet. Okay, because this was part of the judgment. This was part of Paul's judgment. He was going to be able to witness all of his churches go to another. Okay. And I want to keep going. The truth about the matter is this, y'all. Paul wanted to be the Shiloh. I don't know if y'all read or not, but Paul literally thought he was the Shiloh. He wanted to be the prophet of Arabia, better known as the Deuteronomy 1818 prophet. Deuteronomy 33 and 2 and he said the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them and he shined forth from Mount Paran. Paul wanted to be this guy right here. That is none other than a prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Why do you think he was in Arabia? Why do you think he was coming out of the wilderness? He had it in his mind that he was the last and final lawgiver. That's why he gave you 13 letters but Paul moved too fast it was going to be another 500 years before that prophet of Arabia would come and we know that is the prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him okay I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. Now, I told you this is why Islam is the fastest growing religion because God is allowing all the Christians who formerly was a part of Paul's church to join 
Islam. And guess what? I am a result of that. I have about 20 years in Christianity, five in the Israelite movement, and that's still Christianity. They still believe Jesus died for their sins. They still believe Jesus died and rose from the dead. So I am a result of Paul's judgment going on. 2 Samuel 12 and 12. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sons. So what Paul did was a secret. That's why many people don't know. The wickedness of Paul, it was a secret. Only those who study, we can see what's actually going on with the ministry of Paul. We know that he is the tent peg killer. We know that he is the man who killed Jesus on biblical record and took his inheritance. We know that. Going on to verse 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So this is why Jesus has to come and he has to die to prove that he is nothing more than a messenger, a man. And it's all Paul's fault. And that's why, according to the book of Revelation, he will be there for all eternity in hell. OK, that was his judgment. That was his judgment. The child that has to come and die is going to be Jesus. After he comes as a just ruler and destroys the cross, handles his father's business, he will die in the sight of all the people. And we'll bring out those scriptures about the morning later. 2 Samuel 12, 15. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck that child. God is going to lay Jesus down. This is something God has to do. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. The Lord is going to do this to Jesus. This is how Jesus is going to die. Okay, the Lord is going to do this to Jesus. Second Samuel 12 and 16. David therefore besought God for the child and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. Now this is what the Christians is doing. They're praying and praying and praying to no avail. The judgment is sealed. Jesus has to come back and die. Verse 17. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day. See, seven is the number of completion. This is speaking of the last day that that child died. Speaking of Jesus, peace be upon him. And the servants of David feared to tell him, that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? So this is going to happen. And I have scripture. I have Zechariah 12:10, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. Now this is what it means when it says pierced. Pierced is going into a heartbreak. Think about this, man. Think about this. This is the event that has been prolonged for centuries and centuries and eons and eons. Just think about Abraham when he was sacrificing 
his son. Now I'm going according to the biblical account. When Abraham was sacrificing his son, he was getting ready to rather, an angel called out unto him from heaven. Okay? And he said, don't do no harm. Don't, don't kill him. Don't, don't stretch forth your hand to kill him. I'm paraphrasing. And then he said, the Lord hath provided for himself a lamb. This is what that was going into. This was all pointing to the day that God was going to have to close Jesus' eyes. Oh man, this is mourning. The church, the church should be in mourning. Because they had the hoax this whole time. The church should be in mourning. Mourning. So there you have it. I gave it to you. And I want to close with going to the scripture of the firstborn being killed. And this is going to be in Exodus chapter 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence all together. Now, this is going to be the major breakthrough. This is why Jesus' name is Jesus Isa Salvation. There is going to be a huge deliverance from Christianity when Jesus comes and he dies. And I want to keep going. I want to go to verse 5. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, that's speaking of Paul, that sitteth upon his throne, that's speaking of Jesus, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of the beast. Now peep this, and there shall be a great cry. Oh, the cry on the day of the Lord is going to be bitter throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. See, this is a picture of what's going to happen in the end. There's going to be a great cry. There's going to be a great mourning. So there you have it. You just learned the truth. You learned that Jesus was nothing more than a messenger. He was nothing more than a Uriah. Peace be upon him. Oh, this man was killed on biblical record. His inheritance was stolen from him. And everything going on in the church right now has nothing to do with him. Jesus was only interested in one religion. And that religion was Islam. And he has to pass the baton over to the prophet Mohammed. Peace and blessings be upon him. It is a heartbreak of a story. It is a heartbreak of a story. All right, so there y'all have it. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth. Bless you. All praises is due to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala.